Greetings, salutations, welcome to this Prophetic Insights, where we analyze current events within the world, in the church, as they are fulfilling Bible prophecies. Safe to Serve International, first time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this Prophetic Insights. All right, friends, I want to begin by sharing a brief testimony several days ago. And this testimony actually lays the foundation for what we are going to cover throughout this presentation. I was in the office and listening to a sermon entitled Assault on the Tower. And my wife walked into the office looking for something. And uh, she listened for a few moments and she caught the voice, the person preaching. And she said, C.D. Brooks. I smiled and I continued to listen. She walked out the office and several hours later, she came back into the office and I was listening to another sermon entitled, I Want My Church Back. She paused. She listened. She said, hmm, C.D. Brooks again. I smiled and I continued and she walked out and that laid the foundation for what I'm about to address today, as I was listening to those sermons from CD books way back, Oakwood College days, I used to gather all those sermons and make those sermons a part of my foundation. And as I was reminiscing on those times that I would personally meet and speak with Elder Charles Brooks, CD Brooks, and the deep conversations we had regarding ministry and what he would share. And by the way, I'm going to share something later on from a message from CD Books. Those times were very important, personal for me and helped in my growth. And as you can see right here, brothers and sisters, this is actually on the campus of Oakwood College 2001. That's actually in the English department and that day it was an evening i believe when a friday evening when cd books came and presented a message and we had a deep conversation and that picture was taken without further ado i'm going to share with you a clip from i want my church back take a listen it will lay the foundation for what we will cover today A brilliant professional friend of mine called me long distance and, and in an almost desperate tone he said, Charles, I want my church back. And then with anguish in his voice he said, I don't know if I can ever get it back. I want my church back. and. Uh, Later on, I don't know if I can ever get it back. I wonder what the sentiment of Jesus Christ is as he sees the gross apostasies among us as a people. Look at the screen right here, brothers and sisters. Last week, Thursday, June 10th, 2021, I covered the following. Seventh-day Adventist flagship school. Andrews University enacts Pestilence 19 policy, which actually created a two-tier for students and employees. And they have also promulgated that the campus will become a prick site and there is no religious exemption. And of course, I called for a season of prayer. And then I mentioned closet Catholics, even among Seventh-day Adventist leadership and pews. With that in mind, this is what I covered on that day. I'm not going to spend much time on this. I'm simply reiterating to put a nail in a sure place. Look at this. That's from Andrews University, June 2021, the Sunrise Edition. Updates on steps to lift Pestilence 19 protocols. All right, friends. And right there you can see 
that Andrews is actually following the guidelines from the state of Michigan as well as the CDC. 70% of adults and also employees and students must be fully inoculated. All right, friends. Whose policy? It's right there on the screen. Michigan CDC, right there on the screen, my friends. And notice what this actually says. After stating that they are not going to require this from everyone, the inoculation, they actually stated that both employees and students must fill out, must complete the Campus Clear report, Campus Clear document in order to be in person on campus. And there it is. While Andrews University does not require its employees or students to be inoculated, however, there are going to be consequences. What diabolical consequences? Red box, it says, while vaccination remains a personal choice for Andrews students and employees, there are testing, work arrangements, travel, and other implications that will be influenced by those who choose not to be inoculated. And if you look at the bottom section, last paragraph, both employees and students who have not yet been inoculated will need to be tested monthly at their own expense beginning the fall semester 2000. And 21. And of course, Andrews University has been labeled, it carries the epithet, the flagship school within the Seventh day Adventist denomination. It's right there on their own page. Flagship, brothers and sisters, flagship, even the seminary, the seminary at Andrews is the flagship university of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, I'm going to come back to that later on. Don't you forget that. Flagship at Andrews University Seminary. Next, even Forbes magazine, a secular press, ranked Andrews University that number. And the red line says, Andrews University is the flagship university of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, brothers and sisters. With that in mind, what does flagship mean? There it is, friends. It takes the lead. Others follow. Flagship, you could take a look at that, friends. And with that in mind, what has, what has other institutions done? What are their Pestilence 19 policy for employees and students. Remember, I just covered this last Thursday, June 10th, 2021. And what is today's date? Thursday, June 17th, 2021. Look at this now, friends. All right, here it is. This is June 16th. 2021 yesterday on the Facebook page of Southern Adventist University. This is the president, Ken Shaw. Look at the red box. He states, we are excited about the upcoming fall semester. President Ken Shaw hopes that we can reach 70% pestilence 19 inoculation among students and employees before classes begin and safely ease up on our protocols southern adventist university my friends three persons sent me an email with this this morning and two of the three stated that we have always viewed southern adventist university as one of if not the most conservative of all the Seventh-day Adventist institutions of higher learning. And look at this, what they are now promoting. Let's take a look at these clips. Watch this, brothers and sisters. Clip number one, what he states. Listen. Hi, my name is Ken Shaw, president of Southern Adventist University. 
I am looking forward to meeting each of you this fall semester. We are getting ready for a more normal fall. And to do that, we are recommending that all of our faculty, staff, and students get vaccinated before we come back in the fall. <laughs> Friends, you heard that for yourself. Imagine this. So notice now, what will the churches begin to stipulate? Are the Seventh-day Adventist churches going to require, along with consequences, each person receiving the pestilence 19 inoculation in order to enter the church building in person? Mm -hmm. Reasonable questions to ask. Will this create a two-tier among church membership? Who are they following? They're following Babylon's guidelines. Take a look at this. Listen. And in fact, our goal is 70%. And we're going to be tracking that online. So we encourage you to... Where did they get this number from? 70%. All right. Listen. And in fact, our goal is 70%. And we're going to be tracking that online, so we encourage you to check out your emails. And when you get that email, we want you to upload your vaccination card, and that way we can monitor that 70%. And once we get there, we're going to be at a more normal state for fall semester. Now I wonder who then will receive these completed forms, the inoculation card. Show me your card in order to enter, brothers and sisters. What if students refuse? What are the consequences? What if the majority refuse? What will be the negative impact upon the institution? Financially, of course. Have they counted the cost? And where is the great thrust for medical missionary evangelism? That has become archaic, antiquated. They're following the policies of Babylon, promoting Babylon's nostrums. And notice, now he is going to mention, and friends, this is not to excoriate the president, but this is to call him and others to repentance before it is too late. And since this has been a public apostasy, there must be a public renouncing of these sentiments. First Timothy chapter 5, of course. Now, President Shaw is going to mention a raffle. Get pricked in order to enter this lottery. A raffle. And you can then win $500 scholarship incentives to receive the prick. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. Now, one thing that you can do as you upload your vaccination card, you will be entered into a weekly drawing to get a $500 scholarship. So I encourage you to do that as soon as possible because the odds are greater that you'll get that if you do it earlier. My own ask a question. Those of you who are live, talk to me. What's a raffle? What is a raffle? Are you telling me that we must sell our souls for five hundred dollars is that what we are worth is this the repetition of judas iscariot selling christ for 30 pieces of silver this is gambling i'm i'm so thankful some of you put that in the chat this is gambling lottery gamblers this is a lottery of course it is to win money have you ever read a statement in Great Controversy that condemns such practices? By the way, this paragraph is not in the book Great Hope. So now you can see why they want to get rid of the book, The Great Controversy, the full version, and give people, SDAs and the world, the book Great Hope. Why? They want to silence the voice of protest. Raffle? A $500 lottery? La lottery says great controversy page 587 says governor washburn of wisconsin in his annual message stop surfing governor washburn of wisconsin 
in his annual message, January 9th, 1873, declared, Some law seems to be required to break up the schools where gamblers are made. The schools where gamblers are made? Let's read on. It states, These are everywhere. Where? Let's read on. Even the church, unwittingly, no doubt, is sometimes found doing the work of the devil. Southern Adventist University is presently doing the work of the devil. And other churches, Andrews Oakwood, how so, pastor? Because that is a very forceful charge to be levied against Southern Adventist University, Andrews Oakwood, NCU, a strong statement. Let's read on. It says, even the church is sometimes found doing the work of the devil. How? Explain. Listen. Gift concerts, gift enterprises, and raffles. That's it, friends. Raffles. Sometimes in aid of religious or charitable objects, but often for less worthy purposes. Lotteries. Did you read that correctly? Yes, you did. Lotteries, prize packages, etc. are all devices to obtain money without value received. Nothing is so demoralizing or intoxicating, particularly to whom? The young, the young, the young, as the acquisition of money or scholarship or property without labor. There it is, friends. And now it says... Respectable people, respectable people, even President Ken Shaw and others, and Andrews, Oakwood, Northern Caribbean University, it says, even the North American Division General Conference of SDA, it says, respectable people engaging in these chance enterprise. What are chance enterprises? What are chance enterprises? And easing their consciences with the reflection that the money is to go to a good object, chance enterprises. The money to be is to go to a good object. That's it, friends. A good object. It is not strange that the youth of the state, the youth of the church, the youth of SDA schools and church should so often fall into the habits which the excitement of games of hazard is almost certain to endanger. My friends, before I move on, I want everyone to see what I'm about to say. I believe that those who are engaged in these chance enterprises, raffles and lotteries, in order to incentivize SDA youth in our schools and churches to receive the Pestilence 19 inoculation as they quiet their consciences, they're actually having their consciences seared as with a hot iron. Have you ever gotten burned with a hot iron before? On your fingers, your hand? What happened to that area? It's bruised, right? It's red. Anybody? can testify, and that area for a short season becomes numb. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 2, verse number 1 rather, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Look at the quote again. Red words. It says, watch carefully, bottom section, respectable people engaging in these chance enterprises and easing their consciences. It's right there. Their consciences are now seared as with a hot iron, with the reflection that the money is to go to a good object. Now, do you know what's also startling? The quote in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 2 says, they're speaking lies in hypocrisy. 
those of you who are alive, what does hypocrisy mean? You say one thing, but you do another. How could they say you have the right to say no, we do, we, or, or their words, we do not require employees and students to receive the Pestilence 19 inoculation. However, they conflate with that statement hmm, inimical consequences. That is what we call hypocrisy. Now, do you know what we're told when we see this? The schools, the universities, have become the very gates of hell. Now, now, that's a strong statement to me. That Andrews, Southern Adventist University, Walla Walla, PUC, La Sierra, Loma Linda, Oakwood, and the others have become the very great gates of hell. Now, don't take these for my words. Look at the screen one more time. Red words on top. Even the church is sometimes found doing the work of the devil. What does that mean? To do the work of the devil? In what sense? Raffles, lotteries, and chance enterprises. Are you ready enough for the quote? Volume 5, pardon me. Great controversy is the quote. Page 140, Martin Luther the Protestant reformer writes of the universities. He writes, red word, I am much afraid that the universities will prove to be the great gates of hell. That's it, my friends. The great gate of hell. In what context, Pastor Henriquez? They're doing the work of the devil in raffles, lotteries, and chance enterprises. They have become the great gates of hell. That's it, friends. Blue word. I advise no one to place his child where the scriptures do not reign paramount. And every such institution in which men are not unceasingly occupied with the word of God must become how? Must become corrupt. All right, my friends, must become how? Must become corrupt. Hold on. Do you remember that statement I have been reading over and over again, which says very, very soon the churches will be found doing the work of the devil in gift concerts, gift enterprises, raffles, and lotteries, and chance enterprises, particularly among the young people? Please, friends, look at the reference. The reference is Great Controversy, page 387, paragraph 3. Do you know what the next paragraph, the next sentence says? Are you ready for this? Look at the next paragraph. Page 388, paragraph 1. It says, The spirit of worldly conformity is invading the churches throughout Christendom. Blue words. The professors of religion of the present day in every church, what friends? Every church are lovers of the world, conformers to the world, lovers of creature comfort, and aspirers after respectability. They are called to suffer with Christ, but they shrink from even reproach. They shrink from even reproach, apostasy apostasy three times apostasy is engraven on the very front of every church so what then will be engraven on the school of southern adventist university apostasy 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 on oakwood apostasy 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 andrews apostasy apostasy Apostasy, Northern Caribbean University, formerly called West Indies College. Apostasy, apostasy, apostasy. Loma Linda, Gate Beautiful, has now become the gate of hell. Apostasy, apostasy, apostasy. That's it. Not my words, the word of God. We are the watchmen. May I read on? Come back here. Apostasy, apostasy, apostasy is engraven on the very front of every church. 
And they, watch now, and did they know it? What a question. And did they feel it? There might be hope. Oh, friends. If they knew it, if they felt it, there might be hope. But, but what? Alas. What does alas mean? Those of you alive, what does the word alas mean? Alas, they cry. We are rich and increased with goods and stand in need of nothing. Great Controversy, page 388. By the way, that chapter is called A Warning Rejected. A Warning Rejected. How many will see this prophetic insight and reject it? My friends, look at the first sentence again. I want to ask you a question, those of you alive. From where, from whom did Southern Adventist University get the idea of having a raffle, a lottery, gift prizes, chance, opportunities, money, scholarship to incentivize? Oh, that's too much of a domesticated word. But to bribe, to bribe, stronger word, to bribe employees and students to get the pestilence 19 panacea. From whom? Thank you, the world. And that's exactly, thank you, those of you alive. And that's exactly what the first sentence says. The spirit of worldly conformity is invading the churches throughout Christendom. And what came before this paragraph? Go back there. There it is, friends. There it is. Gift concerts, raffles, lotteries, chance enterprises. The spirit of worldly conformity is invading the churches throughout Christendom. Apostasy, apostasy, apostasy. Hold on. So what will happen if the local now SDA churches, whether conference churches or churches not linked to the conference of SDA begin to make this a requirement for in-person worship. What will then be written in God's eyes on their doors? Apostasy, apostasy, apostasy. What said CD books? I want my church back. Listen, friends. Charles, I want my church back. One more time. Charles, I want my church back. Three times. One more time. Charles, I want my church back. And then with anguish in his voice, he said, I don't know if I can ever get it back. Mm, 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 mm. What pathos. What sighing, what weeping, my friend. Listen to how President Ken Shaw closed his remarks. Listen. I pray that God will bless you as you continue through the summer and look forward to seeing you uh, this fall semester. Hmm. What power of mind and soul, Southern Adventist University? No, 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 no. In God's eyes, what three words? One word, three times. Apostasy, apostasy, apostasy. Volume 5, page 14 says, When teachers or professors shall sacrifice religious principle to please a worldly, amusement-loving class, amusement-loving class. My friends, pause right there. Amusement-loving class. Would you agree with me that this would apply to gift concerts, lotteries, raffles, and chance enterprises. Would the term amusement-loving class connect with that? If so, my friends, type in the words amusement-loving class. Back to the quote. When teachers or professors shall sacrifice religious principle to please a worldly amusement-loving class, they should be considered unfaithful to their trust and should be what? Discharged. What does discharge mean? You should be fired. 
you should be terminated. That is what God is saying to men such as President Ken Shaw. And again, this is not a personal attack. This prophetic insight is not a grotesque diatribe against uh, uh, President Shaw is to call him and others to repentance before it is too late. They are prisoners of hope. God says, I want my church back. Will I ever get it back? And notice, my friends, did President Shaw act autonomously when he made this statement? If so, he should be terminated. Hmm. But what if he had the backing of the school board? That means the members of Southern Adventist University School Board have also been implicated. Apostates, apostates, apostates. Where is the outcry? There it is, my friends. By the way, this statement on your screen, look at the bottom, all caps, the words in all caps. It says, this appeal was written for the Michigan camp meeting. Lord, have mercy upon us. Where is Andrews University established? In what state? Michigan camp meeting. But being forgotten at that time, why was it forgotten? They did not want to read it at that time. Anyway, it was read before, later on, before the General Conference, December 1881. It was conveniently not read at that time. Our oh, brothers and sisters, listen to this. This is Oakwood University. Do you remember I shared how President Pollard and the board members of Oakwood University applied for government grant in order to become a VAC site and also to be a part of the movement to inoculate the community with Pestilence 19 elixir. By the way, update, newsflash, Oakwood received the grant money. What an abomination. Where is the effort? Where is the thrust for medical missionary evangelism? Look at the screen, friends. I do understand the hesitancy and I empathize and sympathize with it. I think the risks of not being vaccinated, if one can be, um, are far less than the risks of being unvaccinated in this current environment, especially when there are so many morbidities than people of color. And here it is, friends, the update. Listen. Oakwood University is joining the statewide effort to get more Alabamians vaccinated. Oakwood University is one of multiple grant winners from across the state. The $250,000 grant is offered to boost vaccine numbers in minority groups. As a historically black college, Oakwood leaders hope to establish a vaccine clinic to have a positive impact on the vaccination effort, especially as minority groups are shown to be more hesitant to get the vaccine. Hmm. Listen now to another personnel and representative of Oakwood University. Listen to this. We are not seeing the increase that will offer the kind of general protection uh, that we need. We want them to see that by us joining the community and the vaccination efforts that they can trust the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Oakwood University is just waiting on the green light from the state health department to begin giving those vaccines. What about the employees of Oakwood University? The students of Oakwood University, will they also be required to present their papers? Show us your card in order to enter? This sounds like a socialist, communist country. Where are our rights? No religious exemption. Where are the board members of Oakwood? Where are they? Where is the outcry? The watchmen are silent. Or are they compromisers? Take a look at this, my friends. You know what? All right. 
It says, if a worldly influence is to bear sway in our school, then sell it out to worldlings and let them take the entire control. And those who have invested their means in that institution will establish another school. What a statement, brothers and sisters. And that's why I ask you to read it by yourself. Go, in other words, do not invest in these schools do not support these schools they will establish another school to be conducted not upon the plan of popular schools wait a minute wait a minute not upon the plan of popular schools nor according to the desires of principal and teachers who is president ken shaw He's a president, he's a principal of the school, but upon the plan which God has specified. Brothers and sisters, what a statement. Do not support these schools. Don't invest in these schools. Do you realize for the past several weeks, I've been sharing how worldly colleges and universities have begun to actually make it a requirement for students to, to receive the prick in order to return to school during the fall semester. And what are our institutions now doing, my friends? They are doing the very thing that the worldly schools are doing. Look at the screen. This is from worldly institutions. That's it right there, my friends. Worldly inst institutions. There it is, $1,500 fine per semester. And what are our institutions now doing? And that's why I say that we are living in a time of crisis. My friends, we need to pray. It's a big sellout, I agree, those of you who are alive. Big time sellout. And yet there's no voice of rebuke. Look at this, friends, as it goes on. It says... In the name of my master, I entreat all who would stand in responsible positions in that school to be men of God. When the Lord requires us to be distinct and peculiar, how can we crave popularity or seek to imitate the customs, seek to imitate the customs and practices of the world? My friends, look at the words at the bottom in all caps. It says it was read in College Hall, December 1881. Before whom? Before whom, my friends? Before conference delegates and leading workers in the Review and Herald Office, the Batter Creek Sanitarium, and the Batter Creek College. Brothers and sisters. Again, what did CD Book say? I want my church back. Charles, I want my church back. What did he say, friends? He says, I want my... Charles, I want my church back. One more time. Charles, I want my church back. And then with anguish in his voice, he said, I don't know if I can ever get it back. Brothers and sisters, and with this in mind, I want to turn your attention. Remember, these points I'm bringing out was actually on my mind as I was in my office listening to these sermons. I want my church back. Assault on the tower by Elder C.D. Brooks, and we uplift his family in prayer as he's now resting. He has passed. These things came to my mind. It lays the foundation. I want my church back, brothers and sisters. And as we were conversing, C.D. Brooks clearly state, my friend, he looked me dead in the eyes, square in the eyes. Be a watchman in these last days. And my friends, with that in mind, what are we called to do? We are called to be watchmen in these last days. Go with me to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 3. 
The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 3, what was Ezekiel called to do? His vocation from God was to be a watchman. Those of you who are alive, we are called to be on our watch. Ezekiel chapter 3, look at verse 17. It says, Son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning, warning from me. Verse 18, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turned not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Watchmen. And that's why CD Books had this sermon called Assault on the Tower. Assault who normally would sit in the tower in the land, the watchmen, brothers and sisters. And what would Satan do? He would try, wicked armies would try to get rid of the snipers. Nullify the snipers. First attack the watchmen. And once we remove the snipers, destroy the watchmen, then we can overtake and conquer the city. In a spiritual sense, what is Satan trying to do? Through the majority of SDA leaders, and the majority of people, not all, but to silence the watchmen who are giving rebukes and warnings, who are crying and sighing for all the abominations that be done in the land. Silence the watchmen. Call them, you're airing the church's dirty laundry when it's the same apostates, apostates, apostates three times who are the ones publicly pronouncing proclaiming announcing their apostasies and abominations assault on the tower brothers and sisters by the way before i come to this clip not only are we to warn the wicked mm -mm. verse 21 of ezekiel 3 the bible says nevertheless if thou warn the righteous man who are we to warn? The righteous. That the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin. He shall surely live, because he is warned also. Thou hast delivered thy soul. Warn the wicked. Warn the righteous. That the wicked, the tears, apostates, may have an opportunity to become wheat. Warn the righteous. Warn the wheat, that they may remain righteous that they may remain weak. Are these points clear, my friends? Are these nails in sure places? If so, type in the word nail. Isaiah 22 and verse number 23. I recalled speaking to C.D. Brooks. And in the conversation, let me truncate it, he was also warning me of Andrews University. And my friends, I remember I was about to graduate. And you know, all these young men were talking about, once we leave Oakwood, we are heading to Andrews. And several asked me, are you planning to go to Andrews? Have you applied? Are you getting your documents together? Are you going to Andrews? And normally I would respond. Let me give you my uh, short version. The only Andrew I know is Andrew Henriquez. My name is Andrew. And the only Andrew I know is Andrew. I'm not going to Andrew's University. Because if I may go, I may leave. And my name will be changed. Hope you got that. Name is character. Listen to what C.D. Brooks said about Seventh-day Adventist seminaries. Schools of theology. 
And basically what he's saying is the schools of theology are, are, are now preparing the watchmen to become dumb dogs, will not bark, to become apostates. And then the churches under their care would become filled with abominations. Listen to this. And right now, if a millionaire should stand up out there and say, Brooks, go on sabbatical and get a doctorate. I'll pay for it. I'll support your family, pay your rent, everything. I'd go and I might study English or history or administration or speech or sociology or communication, but I would not study theology either applied, systematic, or contemporary. For I have seen some of our best minds tinctured by this, spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. My critical watchmanship would make me wary. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, what schools of theology was Elder C.D. Brooks talking about? Seventh-day Adventist seminaries have become the very great gates of hell. Again, listen to this, brothers and sisters. He says, or communication, but I would not. And I might study English or history or administration or speech or sociology or communication, but I would not study theology, either applied, systematic, or contemporary. For I have seen some of our best minds tinctured by this, spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. My critical watchmanship would make me wary. Do you know what is very sad? Many of those who are saying, Amen, praise God, are the same ones who support the apostasies. Ezekiel was called to be a watchman. And brothers and sisters, I want to point your attention to what God said. Those who will be sealed in the last days will be found doing. What would they be found doing? In Ezekiel chapter 9, many folks ask me, Pastor, why did you not go to Andrews University? As C.D. Brooks told me, as he just said, my critical watchmanship would become weary. I will not attend. That's it. Ezekiel chapter 9. The Bible tells us, my friends, in verse number 4 through verse number 6, it says God's people... The watchmen are to be found crying and sighing. What does crying and sighing mean? Let me pause and wait for you, brothers and sisters. What does sighing and crying mean? My friends, let us look at this. We are told in volume 5 and page 211, the class that do not feel grieved over their own spiritual declension, nor mourn for the sins of others, will be left Without the seal of God, we must cry and sigh. But many people believe the crying and sighing must be done in some closet. It must not be made public. So do not, do not preach against the sins of these rebellious SDA leaders and people. When they have made their sins public, don't talk about that. Go somewhere in secret and cry and sigh because that is what God told Ezekiel to do. Cry and sigh and that was done in secret. Is that in the Bible? Let's see what crying and sighing mean from the same book, Ezekiel. The same author. We don't have to go to another book. In the Bible, let's stay right here in Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel chapter 21. Ezekiel 21. Cry and sigh and look with me, my friends, at verse number, verse number one. Look at what this says. 
And beloved, I'm going to read all of this. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem. Drop thy sword toward the holy places and prophesy against the land of Israel. And say to the land of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee. And will draw forth my sword out of his sheath. And will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. Look at verse 4. Should I read verse 4? Should I read verse 4? Skip on down to verse number verse number 6. What's the first word in verse 6? Was there a slaughtering coming? Babylon, God was going to use to destroy those in Jerusalem. What's the first word in verse 6? Sigh. Sigh and cry. Verse 6. Sigh therefore, Ezekiel, with the breaking of thy loins, and with bitterness sigh before their eyes. The sighing and crying was to be done publicly before the eyes of church leaders and church members. Sigh before their eyes. Show them. How grieved you are, how sorry and sorrowful rather you are, which will be a type of how God is sorrowful because of their sins, because every sin crucifies Christ afresh. Verse 7 now, and it shall be when they say unto thee, Ezekiel, wherefore sighest thou? How would they know Ezekiel was sighing? Because the sighing and crying was done how? Publicly. Verse 1, verse 2, prophesy publicly. Point out their sins. Call them to repentance. Bible brothers and sisters. Come back to verse 7. And it shall be when they say unto you, Ezekiel, wherefore sighest thou, that thou shalt answer, quote, Ezekiel's words now from God. I'm sighing because the tidings, because tidings cometh, and every heart in Jerusalem shall melt, and all hands shall be feeble, and every spirit shall faint, and all knees shall be weak as water. Behold, danger cometh, and shall be brought to pass, saith the Lord God. Verse 8, again, the word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith God, a sharp sword is coming, and the sword is sharpened. Okay, I want the word cry now. Sigh and cry, go to verse 12. What is the first word in verse 12? Cry. Verse 6, sigh. Verse 12, Cry, sigh and cry publicly. Probation is going to close. Danger, people are going to be cut down, lost. Verse 12, cry and howl, son of man. Why? For it shall be upon my people, it shall be upon all the princes. All the, who are princes? The pastors, elders, administrators, professors within the movement. Terrors, by reason of the sword, shall be upon my people. Smite, therefore, upon thy thigh. You could read the rest of this. Who came? Who came? Verse 14, prophesy against them, Ezekiel. And now, verse number 21, for the king of Babylon is coming. The king of Babylon is coming. Sigh and cry, brothers and sisters. Again. Charles, I want my church back. Charles, I want my church back. Charles, I want my church back. And then with anguish in his voice, he said, I don't know if I can ever get it back. Father in heaven, We're thankful for this presentation. And it's my prayer 
that what we have heard will cause us to have deep heart searching, deep self-examination. Every name, SDA leader, every leader of these institutions, we pray for their conversion. We want to be found sighing and crying based on the scripture and not fearing people's faces, Ezekiel 2 and Ezekiel 3. Doesn't matter what they label us, may we be found faithful watchmen on the walls of Zion. Blow the trumpet, trusty watchmen. May we not be found as dumb dogs that won't even bark, that cannot bark. Lord, as we examine ourselves, may we say, Lord, may we see our need. Give us what we lack the gold trod in the fire, the white raiment, and anoint our eyes with heavenly eye salve. May we not be found supporting apostate leaders, apostasy, but find the local groups where the leaders are living and promoting present truth. If it's in the conference or if that group is not connected to the SDA conference. We want to follow and support truth. We want to be where tears can become wheat and where wheat can remain wheat. Please, Lord, we don't want to sell you out for 30 pieces of silver or for money because your life, your sacrifice, your intercession means more to us than anything this world can offer take the world the songwriter says but give me jesus i want my church back but i don't know if i can ever get it back i believe those words from elder cd brooks are the sentiments of jesus christ save us we pray may we be found faithful and not worry about the black balls that the scoffers within the SDA movement will throw at us, assaulting the tower. But may we be found at our post that when people ask, watchmen, what of the night? We will be able to say, the morning cometh, but also the night. If you will inquire, inquire, return and come, repent and come. We can only receive the former rain, latter rain, if we truly experience Bible repentance. Save us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.